My name is Jamie Simpson, Executive Chef Liaison at the Culinary Vegetable Institute at the Chef's Garden. If you could imagine, for many years, the Chef's Garden has been growing vegetables for chefs in restaurants globally. Charlie Trotter was a huge supporter of the farm for, for many, many years. And with restaurants being gone or closed right now, the Chef's Garden has had to shift rapidly into home delivery. We grow 600 varieties of vegetables that we've kind of consolidated down into six or seven home delivery boxes. The Trotter Project has supported the Culinary Vegetable Institute for many years. We've done several events together and we're, we're blessed and honored to call them friends. What we're going to do today is uh, some simple dishes of mixed greens braised. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, braised greens are just in my blood. What I'd like to do is demonstrate a few simple techniques you can do to make this dish at home. So we got a few things here, uh, specifically bacon, something smoked, doesn't have to be, it can be ham hocks or turkey necks or like uh, you know, smoked turkey wings or whatever you really want, but the idea is some uh, aromatic contribution. And what I love about braised greens is, um, you know, like anything, it's, it doesn't really, it's not really a meat forward dish, though it does contain stock or, uh, or smoked cured meats. Okay, so the goal uh, for this bacon is just to let it render down until it's, um, you know, browned and contributing a lot of flavor to this pot. We're cooking for comfort today. We're cooking for homes. And uh, it's not something we often serve at the Institute, but it's definitely something um, that I grew up with and love deeply. So as this renders, uh, we'll talk about the other ingredients, specifically alliums, onion, garlic, you don't have to use these things. Uh, if you have them, do it, because it's a nice contribution. Some people are picking ramps right now. Consider them. Uh, sweeteners. I like this cane syrup. This cane syrup comes from Guyton, Georgia, and it's this beautiful sort of sulfur-like, kind of funky, savory sweetener. Brown sugar. Brown sugar is another thing you can consider using if you don't have cane syrup or molasses. Brown sugar brings a great sweet quality to the uh, greens. And, and depending on how bitter these greens are will depend on how much sugar you can add. Does that make sense? Uh, pH modifiers, specifically acid you want in here. A lot of people go for uh, vinegar, apple cider. We have an apple vinegar here from Lindera Farms. Uh, but I like hot sauce with a uh, vinegar backbone. This hot sauce comes from our friends at Bli, and it's barrel aged. Um, it's finished with vinegar, and it's a beautiful uh, addition to braised greens. So these look good, and I think we're pretty much there. You can sort of see where we're at right now, um, rendering nicely. Lots of fat in the bottom of this pot, which is going to be good for the next few ingredients that go in. Onions. All in. We're going to let those start before we add the garlic um, for fear of burning the garlic. We're going to let the onions uh, start this process. And once they start to pull water um, and soften up a little bit, we'll add garlic. We're, we're there. And this smell is perfect for home cooking. There's nothing, nothing on the planet like bacon and onions and garlic browning in a pan in your house. It just fills the room. 
uh, and is a great way to start any cooking exercise. From here, we're going to add our greens. Um, and we're going to start wilting these things down until they're manageable. Because there's a pound of uh, leaves here. In this specifically, we're looking at uh, red ruffled kales, red mustards, black mustards, um, lacinato kale, uh, arugula, even some spinach. And it'll take it. A pot this size will take uh, twice as much kale as this. So once we get this started, we're going to shift it into a smaller pot so you can kind of see what's going on. To expedite this kind of steaming, wilting process, now is a good time to consider your stock. You can use vegetable stock, you can use chicken stock, you can use anything you want. Just try and avoid those high sodium uh, grocery store stocks. Steam is really the catalyst here. It's going to help uh, soften these things up really, really quickly. As they start to wilt, um, they really take up a lot less room, so there's no need for a, a big pot anymore. And you can do this in a small pot, you just have to do it in much smaller batches. Right about now when these greens just start to steam nicely and soften up is when I consider things like acid and heat and salt. Um, in this case, going back to acid, we're going to use this apple vinegar from Lindera Farms. Um, just a touch. Uh, we heat a little hot sauce, barrel aged not necessary, use anything you want. A lot of people go, um, you know, pretty, pretty plain here and that's completely okay. When it comes to braising greens, I think braising greens is kind of like a religious for some people, you know, it says there's only one way to do it. And that's not true. Okay, and for that sweetener, we have not added cane syrup yet, right? Remind me, I can't remember. I don't think we have. Okay, good. So we're going to add cane syrup. And again, this, um, it's this kind of fun, funky, aromatic sugar, um, but not necessary. Consider brown sugar, consider molasses, whatever you've got, but sweeten it up because these beans greens are, are bitter, you know, and as they continue to cook, they, they take on a really nice, beautiful, bitter edge, but that can be softened up with sugar. I like this smoked soy sauce from our friends in Michigan at Blee. They make a beautiful barrel aged uh, soy sauce and um, it's lightly smoked and lives right at home here in these greens. So I think we're pretty much there here. These things, again, they cook pretty quickly, which is great, where um, traditional greens might take hours or days to break down. Consider serving this with roast chicken, um, maybe root vegetables, maybe fried chicken. Consider rice, consider corn grits or something like that. They're really a, a versatile thing to, to have at home and in the kitchen. We are forever grateful for Charlie Trotter's contribution to the culinary world. And if supporting the Trotter Project is one way of showing thanks, then we are happy to do it. To support the Trotter Project, visit trotterproject.org.